Hello my lovely friends! My name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I've read so far in the month of September. I'm excited to talk about these books and I can't believe we're like halfway through September. My mind is blown. So I have a wide range of books to talk about today so let's get started. I'm going to talk about the books in the order that I read them. First was one that I was really excited for but was a huge disappointment unfortunately and that is The Cyborg Merman by Amanda Milo. I love Amanda Milo. If you have not read any of her books please do if you're into monster or alien romances. If you have not read her books yet Blindfall is probably my favorite. It is so good and so I was really excited that I found this short little novella by her. However, I dislike this one so much <laughs> and it's probably me like a personal thing for me um, because at the beginning of the book there is like a, a note saying like if you're not into non-consent stuff like you're probably not gonna like this book and so that's me. <laughs> I didn't like it. The heroine is a human woman. She lives on this uh, ranch kind of like on an alien planet where there are a bunch of ranchers and her husband recently passed and um, her husband's friend, I don't remember his name, but he is a merman cyborg, realizes like there's other men trying to take like this woman's land. And so the only, like the way that men are able to do that in this world is by sexually assaulting a woman and taking her land, which is disgusting. Um, and so that's kind of basically what he does. And he has a cyborg, like with his cyborg abilities, he can like control your mood and thoughts and feelings in your brain. And so he basically forces her to like what he's doing to her. And I just wasn't for it. <laughs> um, it's a little, that's a little too much for me, honestly. We're going here for obviously non-con. <laughs> And um, I gave this two stars and it was unfortunately very highly disappointing. Again, that's my personal preference though. I know some people like to go into a more darker realm, but that's just not my taste. Next is a DNF. Ugh, I've been, I was I was not doing great with these first two books, y'all. Um, it's The Kreenar's Captive, by, or The Kreenar Captive by Anna Zaris. Yeah, I DNF'd this book. I read one of the Kreenar books last month. You would have seen it was by Emma Castle. Um, so this is like an alien romance series written by different authors that have all like participated in this series all centered around these alien creatures called Kreenar who have come to earth to kind of like take over earth but humans still exist on the planet um, but Kreenar kind of like rule and I was just at 50 percent and I was so bored so bored this heroine she's a human woman she is in this jungle I don't know where which jungle it is but she ends up falling like hitting her head and the Kreenar guy ends up rescuing her not knowing who she is takes her back to his house heals her and they basically play house together and I was super bored. Next is a gem, a gem. I loved this. I received an arc of Finding Gene Kelly by Tori Jean and it was so good. I really liked this. Um, I have a full entire review on my Goodreads. I go really in depth on my arcs because I write a review for every book that I read, but I really go in depth with my arcs. And so this one and another video, another book in this video will have more in depth reviews. So my Goodreads review is definitely more in depth than what I'm going to talk about now. But my Goodreads is always linked down below towards like the bottom of the description if you want to go check out my Goodreads. But I thought this was so great. For a debut novel, it was so good. So this one is about Evie and she's currently living in Paris, even though she's American. Um, her grandmother and her always dreamed about going to Paris one day um, and living there. And so she's been living there, I think for six years and she's living her best life or trying to live her best life, that is. She's very clumsy and uh, into old Hollywood movies and she has endometriosis. So there is chronic illness representation in here. Um, its own voices as well, Tori Jean has uh, and Doe herself. And so Evie in here is really into Gene Kelly. Now, I'm 24. I did not, <laughs> I did not grow up uh, with movies that have Gene Kelly in them. I didn't know who Gene Kelly was before I read this book. So that might be like a thing, a reason why I did not give this book a full five stars for me. It's just because there was a bunch of references I did not personally get. And so I felt lost at times. Um, and that's a me thing, obviously. Anyway, she's really wanting to find a man like Gene Kelly. Like basically that's her dream man. Okay, that's her dream man. Growing up, her and her brother lived next door to Liam Kelly and she present day hates him. And you don't really know why. Um, but basically present day she's in Paris and her best friend comes to visit and he brings along, he brings along uh, Liam. <laughs> and by some means you read about in the book, they have to fake date while they are in Paris together. I thought this was so sweet and so cute. Liam is everything. I loved him and how much he loved and cared for Evie. Like 
dang, dang, I need my own Liam Kelly. Um, I absolutely adore the scenes with caretaking involved. Evie has a few flare ups like on page with her endometriosis and the way that he cared for her and took care of her, I I want Batman. Like, give me, give me Liam, please, give me. I was, however, a little bit sad that we did not get Liam's perspective in here because I feel like that would have been so amazing and would have just added to the novel in general. I personally do not have endometriosis, and so I cannot speak on the representation with that. I assume, based off of what I've read, it's great. Um, I have a chronic illness myself and I was really, really, really able to connect to Evie just on the basis of chronic illnesses uh, and the way that you feel and the guilt you feel and the pain you feel. Like, she was so relatable. I do not have her exact chronic illness. However, I felt her chronic pain. I can't wait to hear what my friends think who have endometriosis. I would love to know their opinions. I think Crystal is currently reading it and I can't wait to hear her thoughts. I just love how Tori Jean put this representation into the world like because it was done phenomenally well I believe at least in the chronic illness just chronic illness part. Another reason why I did not necessarily adore this as much as I really wanted to is I talked about the references I just didn't understand and two is I don't know anything zero zilch anything about Paris besides that there's like the Eiffel Tower and other stuff. I am not cultured okay I know I'm not I will I, I will admit that. I know nothing about Paris and so when there were places mentioned and things mentioned that weren't explained, I was kind of lost and felt a little left out. I felt like FOMO and um, yeah, again, it's a personal thing. So that's why I did not adore, adore this book. Um, just because like, I need to love every second of every moment of a book that I adore, you know? I also want to mention that this book is low on the spice scale. Um, so please be aware of that if you are wanting a high spice book, this is not in there. It's not fade to black and it's not closed door, but it's very low. I have a bunch, a bunch of memorable quotes on my Goodreads review, so please go check that out. But I can read like one or two, okay? A lot of the time we measure success in forever, but with my disease, I learn to have success in fleeting moments or else what was the point of anything? Oh, that one hit me hard. I loved that. And then another one that I have is I've tried to keep my heart safe from you but you had it in a death grip before I knew I'd given it to you. And I don't know if I want it back anymore because I think for the first time in maybe ever, I like that I'm in love with you. Oh, so good. Okay, trigger warnings. Parental gaslighting slash passive aggressive bullying, her mother, my word, just please be aware of her. Um, discussions of infertility and of course, discussion of chronic pain and on page, chronic pain and flare ups, um, tropes, Baking, the heroine loves baking. I really, really related to her in that. Um, it's a big city romance, it takes place in Paris. There's caretaking scenes, childhood crush romance. There's chronic illness rep, a cinnamon roll hero. There's fake dating. It's definitely a foodie romance. There's so much food talked about in this book. Um, there's great banter, the hero falls first. Love those. Um, there's longing. There are meddlesome family members too. A quirky heroine, one of them is reluctant to love. Um, there's disability rep and we have a sweet hero. I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four to five stars. Next we have a five star read. Okay, I love this. This is A Soul to Keep by uh, Opal Rain. Man, this book is so good. I cannot wait for this whole series. This is the first book in her Dusk Walker Bride series. I need it now. I need book two now. It comes out I think in October. I'm so excited. I'm gonna keep this summary kind of like vague because I loved all of the things that I did not know while reading this, like before going in. Um, so this is the romance between Rhea and Orpheus. So Rhea lives in this village that sacrifices a woman to Orpheus, this demon looking creature um, called a Duskwalker, sacrifices a woman, a bride, once every 10 years for protection from demons. There's demons living in this land, Demons kill humans. Orpheus is not a demon demon. He's kind of like half human, half demon, if that makes sense. Anyway, so Rhea is chosen and Orpheus takes her and takes her to the cabin that he has and they have to live together. And Rhea realizes that Orpheus is not this giant scary monster that you obvious, obviously see on the cover. Like that's not who he is on the inside. He's this sweet bean of a creature that just wants to do anything and everything for this woman. Like he just wants love and friendship and companionship. Like he just wants someone to love him. I'm gonna cry. Oh my gosh, I, I love Orpheus. I love him. I loved the way that he cared for her. It was amazing. And then their, their time, their times together, holy crap, Ola. Like man, so good. Because this book was long, I rarely read long romances that are not on audio. I prefer to listen to them 
ebooks that are over 500 pages, physical books that are over 500 pages, I really put off. This one, however, I just felt like I needed to read. And I think because it was over 500 pages, like you slowly got to see the progression of how these two fell in love with each other on page. It was beautiful. I thought the world building was amazing. The creature character building was amazing. I cannot wait to read more from this author. For trigger warnings, you have animal death. Please be aware of that. They're like not pet death, it's animal death. Like she's living in a cabin in the woods. She has to eat animals that they find in the woods, okay? Um, there's blood and gore and killing. Um, tropes, you have captor captive, caretaking. It is definitely a character driven book. So please be aware of that. Um, there's a height difference. Hero definitely falls first in here. The I hate everyone but you trope, definitely. Orpheus hates everybody but Rhea. <laughs> so um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a long romance. It is a monster romance. There is a, a good scene talking about like periods in here, especially when you have a demon creature like Orpheus who eats humans. He's trying so hard not to eat this woman. <laughs> and then when she smells of blood all the time, it is so hard for him not to eat this woman. It was funny. It was good. Okay. There's also magic involved. And this is also a TikTok hyped romance too. I gave this book a five out of five stars. I read a few like monster romance novellas because I really want to come out with a monster, another, a monster, another monster romance recommendation video. So I'm trying to read more of them, especially like novellas because they're quick and easy for me to get through. So one that I decided to pick up is The Orc Run by Poppy Kill... Kildare, Kildare, Kul Poppy, okay. <laughs> so this was just a really fun 30 page monster novella, honestly. Um, so this is about Viola. She lives in this kingdom where I think once a year they have the orc run. There's like this kingdom of humans she lives in, okay? And there are demons or something that like come and attack the kingdom. However, there are orcs in a different land and the orcs will like protect them from these demons for payment, obviously. They need to have the orc run once a year where human women like volunteer to run out into the woods. The orcs chase them, bed them, and that's about it. Sometimes they run off with their orc lover. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. So they also have a different thing when it comes to like women of nobility. So the heroine in here is the wife to like a high up dude, high title dude. Um, and her name gets chosen from the bowl. Kind of like the Hunger Games. Like, a titled woman gets chosen from the bowl every year because normally it's like pe peasant, like more lower class people that go on the run, like they volunteer. Um, and so her name gets pulled from the bowl and she's excited to go run from an orc and have fun with him. So this would be an amazing full length novel, honestly, if the author would have like lengthened it and added more to it, it would have been fantastic. So I gave this one just 3.5 out of five stars. For tropes, you have like the chasing trope. I don't know what kind of like kink that is, but <laughs> like the chasing trope thing where you get like turned on from chasing somebody. I don't know what that trope is. Let me know down below what that trope is called because I forget. Um, it's on Kindle Limited. It is a monster romance and it is also a orc romance and it is a novella. Oh, I read another five star read. This is Southern Storms by Bernice C. Cherry. A a Bernice C. Cherry is almost automatically going to get five stars for me because her writing just is amazing. I love her in general. Bernie C. Cherry is amazing and her writing is phenomenal. Like it makes me feel so many things. So this is the romance between Kennedy and Jax. Kennedy has been going through a lot of hard things recently. Um, her husband just kind of like kicked her out of her home um, and like a year or so ago I believe she got in a car accident um, and her little baby girl is not alive anymore and she's finding it very difficult to cope with that. Any, any parent would um, and her husband doesn't really like the way that she's acting now after everything. And so he's a piece of garbage. Okay. We already know this. Um, anyway, she ends up winding, winding up on her sister's front porch, who she hasn't talked to in a while. And her sister welcomes her with open arms and allows her to stay in one of their rental homes, her and her husband's rental homes. It's in this town called Havenborough, which is a very small town filled with a bunch of gossipy, gossipy people. <laughs> One of her first days there, she runs into basically the town grump named Jax. And Jax is going through his own struggles. His dad is basically in hospice and he doesn't need a distraction from a woman right now. He's going through a lot of stuff. But then when he keeps like bumping into Kennedy, he realizes that like she looks familiar and he might know her from somewhere in his past. And I'm not gonna say 
what that is because I was kind of shocked realizing that. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> this was just really wonderful um, and very emotional at times. You have dark like emotional topics like uh, spousal abuse, parental abuse, and grief from a loved one dying. And um, also I feel like based off of my experience with panic attacks, like the way that Brandy C. Cherry writes about someone having a panic attack is like, you know what I feel. You've seen what I, like, like I fully related to that. I really loved Jax and Kennedy's relationship and how it expanded quite a while more than I expected. And I just love the small town atmosphere. I really hope the other books in the series, because this is the first book in the Compass series, I think book four like came out today. Um, anyway, I hope that the rest of the series take place in the small town too, because like, it was really cute. I feel like Jackson and Kennedy are truly soulmates and I just loved reading about their romance. For trigger warnings in here, you have spousal abuse, par parental abuse, death of a parent, death of a child, um, panic attacks, and grief tropes. Um, one of the characters is an author, Kennedy is, uh, childhood friends, damaged hero, damaged heroine, emotional, there are flashbacks, there is a discussion of grief, and it is a small town romance. I gave this book five out of five stars. Another monster romance novella, <laughs> I decided to pick up Incubus Summoned by Tara Phillips. This one was hot. This is like 60 pages and it's about um, a witch named Lena summoning a succubus demon, kind of like it's like a rebound thing for her ex cheating on her. Um, his name is Chris and they have some fun and hot, hot times together. There's even one scene where, um, other people join them if you get my drift <laughs> um but this was like full of seam if you just want like literal filth from a monster romance this is this is one you need to read tropes in here demons kindle limited it's a novella and the heroine's a witch so i put it under the witch trope um i give this book 3.5 out of 5 stars another one that i read is grave tidings by salem st Clair. can you tell i was in a mood i was in a mood this one is like 60 50 pages i can't recall um but along those lines definitely under 100 pages um and this is a hot monster romance novella that takes place during christmas time so our heroine noelle um <laughs> basically kind of like it's having a really hard time with christmas right now and she just starts like cursing at santa flipping him off like knowing that she's not actually talking to like the real santa you know um and also in this universe in this world like people know that like creatures exist so she knows that santa exists the easter bunny exists also krampus exists so she knows that these like these creatures exist <laughs> but she's just like when, when your Christmas tree falls down your slippery stairs, you know, that you're bringing up to your apartment, like you're gonna be frustrated and curse somebody out. And so why not curse out Santa? Um, and so Krampus comes to punish her for <laughs> for cursing out Santa, which is ridiculous, I know. Um, and it takes place all on Christmas Eve and they have some fun time together with a lot of rope possibly, um, which was fun. And so, yeah, I just wish there was more. Um, I feel like it ended too abruptly for me. For tropes, you have Christmas, Candle Unlimited, it's a monster romance and it is a novella. And there are some BDSM like aspects in here too. Um, so I give this book 3.5 out of five stars as well. I then read a 12 page novella. So a novella that I've been wanting to read um, for a little bit is one of Grace Draven's that I haven't picked up yet. Um, they're just like short novellas. If you love her world and her books, like this is just like little cherries on top that'll make you happy, you know? And so I read Strong Blood, which is in her um, Lover of Thorns and Holy Gods anthology. So you can't buy this own novella by itself. You have to get it with, I think, only this anthology. I've read all the other ones besides this one. So this was just really surprising because I didn't expect this book to be a crossover. All I thought was that this book was like a little novella after Entreat Me, if you've read Entreat Me. However, it's kind of like a crossover between Entreat Me and Master of Crows, which was so cool because I love both of those books so much. So you have characters like meeting each other from other books, which was so cool. I gave this four stars because like I just love anything Grace Draven. Grace Draven is like my one of my top three favorite authors so I love like anything that she writes and I thought this little addition was like so cool. Another arc that I ended up reading in September is Hidden Truths by Neva Altaj. This is her third book in her Perfectly Imperfect series. Now this video is going to be going up before this book's release date. This book comes out on September 22nd. I've been talking about this series for the past couple months and I just love them. This is like her third book ever and I really enjoyed it. Again, you can check out my Goodreads review for a more in-depth in review, obviously, because this is an arc. I talk more about it in my review, but uh, you've met these two characters briefly 
in the previous book in the series, Broken Whispers. So in that book, we have Sergey, who is kind of unhinged. Like he is unhinged. He's kind of like a little cuckoo pants, people think he is, because he's dangerous. Like he can flip a switch like that and kill off a man. In, in, in Broken Whispers, you see him rescue this woman from this business transaction that they're doing. And that is Angelina. And so you're reading, reading about their story in this book and who Sergey really is and what happened to him in his past. Oh, if you can hear that, that is a plane. Anyway, so Sergey, you read about him and his past and why he is the way he is and what happened to him. He's a very damaged, scarred hero with a lot of PTSD. And then you have Angelina and you read about her. She's actually the daughter to the previous like ruler of the ruler leader there you go leader of the mexican cartel you got to see how and why she ended up in the situation that she did in broken whispers and how she gets out of it and sergey saving her and what happens after that sergey takes one look at her basically and is like this woman is mine now she's mine i'm keeping her for forever it doesn't matter what she thinks. So it's kind of captor captive too, in a sense. I feel like we also got more mafia elements than we did in the two previous books in the series because Sergey is really into like mafia world. Like he is into that. He goes on a lot of meetings, ends a lot of lives in this book. <laughs> I could not put this book down. It was highly addictive. Her writing style is amazing to me. It's so easily consumable while also being beautiful at times. I really loved how these two came together and started falling in love for each other. It just happened a little bit too quickly for my taste. I like to like things to be drawn out a little more. I think these two fell for each other very quickly, but that's just a me issue. So I have a bunch of memorable quotes on here too. And I'll just read like one or two for you. When you look at me, I remember I'm still alive. Love that one. She looks at me the way she always does. Like she sees me, not someone they send in when stuff needs to be destroyed or people eliminated. Not the unhinged man everyone fears will kill them if they look at him the wrong way. Just me. Yes, Angelina fully loves, loves Sergey. And the way that she gets him out of these, he has these like states and episodes, the way that she's able to get him out of that state like the, she's the only person that's able to get him out of that state. And oh, loved reading about them. Trigger warnings, gore, violence, abuse, torture, PTSD, and guns. Guns was not on the like trigger warning page in the book because she does have a trigger warning page for you like before you read the, before you start the book. But guns is a trigger warning for me. So I put that in here. Um, So just be aware of that. Um, Tropes, uh, books with pets. Oh my gosh, this guy, he has a dog named Mimi. And she is this giant guard dog. She's also a big sweetie pie. I loved Mimi. Um, it's a captor captive, damaged hero. Hero falls first. It's a mafia romance, a nightmare savior. Um, that's where someone like rescues them when they're having a nightmare, like wakes them up. Um, a tatted hero and the trope of who did this to you? I love that. I love that trope. I really enjoyed this. I gave it a four out of five stars just because again, it was a little bit too insta-lovey for my taste, but everything else was freaking fantastic. I also read Ruby Dixon's newest release, which is Flores Fiasco, which is book number 17 in the Ice Home series. I'm not talking about this book in here because a dedicated video for that will either be the next video I post or the video after that. Um, it's coming up very soon, so please be patient. But um, in that vlog, I talk about like all my spoilery thoughts about that book. So if you have not read this book yet or this series yet, don't watch that video, just for warning you, unless you wanna be spoiled. Um, but this is just about Floor and the mate that she is paired up with. I'm not gonna say who it is because it might be a spoiler. This was enjoyable and um, the ending was quite surprising to me. I was not expecting the ending to go that way. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that. And you can watch my video um, that'll be posted soon to know my in-depth thoughts. And the last book that I'd like to mention that I've read so far in September is Unbreakable by Emma Scott. This is one of her earlier works. This was published in 2015. And I was honestly really nervous going into reading this book because book one in the series, I think that was her first book ever published. Book one, I hated which was so surprising to me because I love like the full tilt to it. I love Forever Right Now. I love so many of Emma Scott's books. And so I was so shocked when I hate, like I, I despise book one in this series, the City Lights series. And so I was really nervous to read this book because it's book two. And um, I don't know how I feel. I don't know what I'm gonna rate it. I might not even rate it, which is totally okay. But I just wanna kind of like talk about my thoughts with this book. This is the romance between Corey and Alex, Alexandra. At the beginning of this book, you read about Alexandra being a phenomenal 
kick butt uh, lawyer. And that's all she's known for. That's all she does is work. And she's very proud of her job and what it has, has provided for her. At the beginning of this book, she is engaged. So I will say there is cheating in here. So please be aware of that. The cheating in here, I didn't really care about, like I didn't hate. Um, I think it was like other aspects of the book, which I'll mention in a second. She's running some errands after work one day and she's actually having like the wedding invitations in her bag and she needs to stop by the bank first to like deposit a check or something. And while she's in line, she ends up meeting Corey. Corey is there, I believe, to deposit his paycheck and they get to talking, small talk, whatever. And they find each other attractive. Um, but Alex isn't gonna do anything. She's an engaged woman. She's just like, oh, this guy is very cute. Okay. Um, but then the bank gets robbed and the two of them and other people in the bank at the time get taken as hostages for I believe three days. The two of them lean on each other for support, for life, literally for life. They are depending on each other. And the two of them start to bond to each other when they're here. They think they're going to die. And they have this passion between the two that they cannot ignore and they act on it in this life and death situation. However, um, things get a little messy whenever they they get out of that situation. Um, and she realizes she is still engaged to the guy she's been with for six years. And so it gets kind of messy after that, um, but not in a way that I necessarily enjoyed. With When it comes to like, cheating in romances or love triangles possibly um i don't I, I would not say this is a love triangle romance this is definitely a cheating romance what i don't love in those kinds of instances is if that person um like if alex for example like the heroine if she does not have a solid reason as to why she's staying with this previous guy like gives zero good reason why is she still with him like i don't under like i didn't understand that part like because like corey and her obviously have this chemistry and this connection and this passion, which she does not have almost anything like that with the guy she's engaged to. And I'm just like, girl, dump his butt, like dump his butt, like do it. Um, and so I was very frustrated with Alex while reading this. Um, so I don't really know what to rate it because the beginning, the part when they're in the bank, it's horrible for me to say because they're in a hostage life and death situation and like that's horrible, but that was my favorite part of the book because of how tension heavy and angsty and forbidden it was. So I didn't hate the cheating part in here. I hated Alex not doing something about the situation. She just didn't know what to do and just stayed in the situation of being engaged to this guy she doesn't have a lot of feelings for while also being with Corey. I'm like, you are just in for an explosion disaster by what you're doing right now. So I don't really know what I'm gonna rate it. I might not rate it at all. We will see, um, but it was definitely a roller coaster of emotions. And if you're into Emma Scott and um, you don't mind a cheating trope, I definitely would recommend this book for you. Tropes you have, it's a single dad, it's on Kindle Unlimited, there's cheating, obviously. And those are the only three I can think of at the top of my head right now. I didn't write my review yet, so I don't have it all listed. Oh, she's a lawyer too, that's another one, a lawyer. Anyway, uh, that's that's it. I don't know what I'm gonna read it, so I'm gonna leave it, leave it at that. Anyways, there you have it. Those are the 15 books that I've read so far in September. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting, any of those things, you can leave me a um, purple emoji of some sort. It doesn't matter what kind of emoji, it just has to have purple on it. So thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.